before we have our prayer, I'd like to have a moment of silence in memory of Corporal Heath, Keith he Cook with the Del Mar Police Department and all the other officers whose names appear on that police memorial right over there who have given their lives in defense of the people of the state of Delaware. A moment of silence, please. Heavenly Father, please bless this gathering of friends and neighbors who have come together in friendship and fellowship in support of the shooting sports, the right to keep and bear arms, and the Second Amendment. We thank you for this opportunity to meet and for the miracle of our Constitution which makes such gatherings possible. Please bless and keep safe these United States of America and the great state of Delaware. We ask that you preserve, protect, and defend our constitutional form of government and the men and women of our armed forces as they serve our country throughout the world to keep us free especially those at sea and overseas who may now be in harm's way. Please bless and vouchsafe our men and women of law enforcement as they strive to keep us safe. We ask that you bless all those gathered here today and please help us to make our voices heard as we petition our government to respect our rights, defend our freedom, and to uphold and defend our Constitution. We pray that you will guide our elected representatives and give them the strength and the wisdom to forever protect our shooting sports, our right to self-defense, and the Second Amendment from attacks by those who would destroy our history, our culture, our freedom, and our heritage. We thank you for the blessings of liberty and ask you for your divine guidance in the days and weeks to come. We pray in your name. Amen. Amen. And now for our national anthem. Please come up. Ladies and gentlemen, please, re please remain standing. <coughs> Veterans and active current military are authorized to keep their headgear on and render the proper hand salute. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare of the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave? Oh, the land of the free and the home of the Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in rendering honors to America with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, that's a way to get started. Yeah. Yeah. What you're here today to hear is how bad these two bills are 
and what you can do to help get them stopped. Just showing up here gives a message to the folks that work in that building sometimes. They're not there now. They're not there during the week. However, when they, we will get the word to them that all of you in this crowd do not like these two bills. What are the two bills? Three, Senate bills three and six. The status of the bills, the magazine bill passed the Senate, it passed the House committee on party line vote, now sits awaiting further action. Tuesday, probably the most important bill that has to be stopped is the permit to purchase bill, which will be up for a hearing, and I will encourage everyone to sign up, to speak, or to listen to that hearing. We need you in numbers to show support for the cause of not doing these bills. What's the permit to purchase bill do? Everybody in this crowd, if this bill is passed and signed, would have to apply for a permit to purchase a handgun. That doesn't sound right to me. You're giving up your right to a part-time temporary government official to decide whether or not you are qualified to purchase a handgun. That's not right. No government official should be deciding whether you can exercise your constitutional rights. The right to keep and bear arms is not granted to us by any government. It's a God-given right that we have at birth. And it shall not be infringed. On the federal level, on the state level, we have a more expansive right to keep and bear arms. So you have to apply for a permit to purchase a handgun. You have to get fingerprinted. You have to make an application. They're a little devious in doing that, so there's no fee for the permit or the application, but there's a fee for the fingerprints. The reason they did that was so they didn't need a supermajority to pass the bill. That's devious. That's several things they've been very devious about. So you make your application to purchase a perm uh, to get a permit to purchase a handgun. It's given to the uh, director of the Department of Homeland Security here in Delaware. He looks it over, decides, okay, there's a whole bunch of disqualifiers. Then he gives it to the local authorities of the place where you live, the city or town, or if it's an unincorporated area of state police. They get to make the decisions whether or not you're qualified to buy a handgun. That's not right. We can't let them do that. So with your support and your input to these legislators, we can get this stopped. We need to send a message. We are the majority. We are not for any of these bills. It's a simple, small group of people all 10 of the moms demand action, and you gotta check their driver's license and make sure they're not being imported from out of state. We're the majority in this state. We have the right to keep and bear arms. We have to exercise that right. We have to make sure that these politicians don't take it away. We have a list of speakers today. The very, very group, they all spend a few minutes and giving you some ideas, and giving you their feelings on where things are going. First of all, I'd like to, Mitch Denham, is Mitch around? Right. Mitch Denham is the uh, a president of Delaware Gun Rights. He's been around for a couple of years, you probably all know him. Mitch, welcome. Amen. Nice to see all of your smiling faces. Welcome everybody to the rally. This is awesome. I'm glad to see everybody out here. It's absolutely repugnant what is happening not in that building behind us. Um, the fact that the people have been removed from the process, that you and I no longer matter. That just shows what they thought about us, right? We never mattered. But now they're in a position where they get to see how much we matter with this large crowd that we have here. 
We have things that we've done like lawsuits to try to help out. We got the DSSA getting ready to file lawsuits if this stuff passes. Please give them every dollar you can. They're going to need every dollar. We're being railroaded. And the only way to do that, to stop the railroading, is to hold them accountable financially and legally. That's the only thing that we got left. We're going to show up here, do everything that we can do this way. And at the end of the day, if it passes, we spend the money. And that's, that's what I would like everybody to do, is give money to the DSSA. Any dollar that you can give them. It's the same with the NRA. Give the NRA as much money as you can. They're the ones that are going to do the, the legal fight. So there's that. Um, circle of influence. Anybody familiar with the concept of circle of influence? Circle of influence is everyone you know, right? If you tell them, hey, Senate Bill 3 is happening. This is what it is. Senate Bill 6 is happening. This is what it is. If you inform your friends, neighbors, you're bound to pick up one or two of them. Bound to, and they do the same thing. They're bound to pick up one or two of them. And that's how this thing grows. That's how you end up with a crowd like this. That circle of influence is what created all of this. Between the DGR uh, posts, the DSSA posts, all that stuff on Facebook, the signs that Kim was putting out, um, the Patriots for Delaware, all the things that they're doing, it's all circle of influence and it grows and it grows and it grows. The question I have for you is who did you learn? Who did you bring here today? Who did you tell what was happening? If no one, you have nothing but to look at but yourself. If you told one person, you're doing what you're supposed to do. So we want to grow this movement. We want to let them know that, that we're going to bring the fight to them. And the only way to do that is to grow and make this happen. So I need a commitment from everyone that you're going to tell someone that about what's going on. I, I need a commitment from everyone that the next time we have one of these rallies, you bring someone with you that didn't know this was happening. And I need to, to have a commitment from you that you're in this fight. Otherwise, might as well just turn them all in. Because they're going to take them from you if you lay down. And I don't know if y'all remember our battle cry or not, but I believe it was not one inch, wasn't it? Well, can I hear that? Not one inch. Not one inch! Right. So, fight, bring a friend, and let them know exactly how you feel. Send emails, make phone calls, file your own lawsuits if you can afford to do so. Whatever it is that you feel like you can do to bring the fight to them, do it. And if you're laying down doing nothing, which I guess I'm not really speaking to anybody here when I say that. If you're laying down doing nothing, turn them in. Give them up. You don't need them anyway. You're not going to fight when the, t the time comes. Because the Second Amendment wasn't written for deer and neighbors that intend to harm you. It was written for the people that work in there. And the people that work in Washington. It was so that if they ever became so tyr tyrannical that they tried to oppress us, we could stand up and say, oh, hell no. Hell no. Hell no. So that's, that's what the Second Amendment's about. It's not about you know, whether or not you can take your 450 Bushmaster to the woods and, and have dinner on your table. It's about if those guys intend to do bad things to you, you can do bad things back. Right. Yeah. Nobody wants to do that. But it's there if you have to. It's the reason that it's the Second Amendment. The First Amendment is freedom of speech, freedom to peaceably assemble, right of redress, and freedom from Congress creating a religion. That's what it is. When all that stuff doesn't work, you have no longer have freedom of speech, you have no freedom to assemble and no right of redress, Second Amendment's there to take care of that. That's what it's for. That's why it's second. Because we're going to talk first. And if I can't settle it by talking, it is what it is. So, I thank every one of you guys for coming out tonight. This afternoon, I should say. You guys are awesome. I see a lot of fresh faces I've never seen before, which is a good thing. Come and get them from my cold, dead hands. Right there. All right, guys, I'm going to turn it back over to Jeff, and I thank you all for coming out. Give money to DSSA and NRA. I can't implore you enough. Thank you. Yeah. All right, thank you, Mitch. Okay, I'm going to ask, how many people out here registered to vote? No, don't tell me. Who, are, who isn't registered to vote? 
Nobody better raise their hand. Everybody voted in the last election, didn't they? Did anybody not vote in the last election? There you go. That's what we need. You got to vote. And do it the Chicago way. Vote right, vote often. All right, it's my pleasure now to introduce John Sigler, past president of the NRA, past president of the DSSA, my mentor. You know you're getting old when you got to get a hand up. I've been around this thing a long time. Good, yeah, now. Is there a patriot in the house? I can't hear you. Is there a patriot in the house? Wait a minute, I'm facing the wrong way. Is there a patriot in that house? No! Well, we don't know. We don't know. There are 41 members of the house. 11 have sponsored those two bills, Senate Bill 3 and Senate Bill 6. That means that there are 30 who could be patriots because we know what the others are. They're tyrants. You can call them anything else you want, but there are only two kinds of people in this world. Patriots and would-be power-grabbing tyrants. Yes. So let's say it again. Is there a patriot in the house? God, I hope so. I hope there are 21 of them in there to stop these two bills. We know there weren't enough on the other side. There better be enough on this side. And there will be if your voice is heard. And that's why we're here. We're here to exercise our First Amendment right to petition our government for the redress of perceived wrongs. And it was wrong what the Senate did. Let's not make it wrong what the House does. We're here to petition. Everybody signed the petition? Yeah. Where's Chuck Welch? Judge Welch, where are you? Judge Welch right over there. He just retired from sitting on the bench. He was House Majority Whip for eight for six years in there, went on the bench, and now he's back in the fight. He's retired. How are we doing, Chuck, with the with the petition? Are we doing all right? All right. He, the first the first recipient of the NRA's Defend Our Freedom Award, Chuck Welch. All right, now, we're going to sign these petitions. What else are we going to do? Well, you've heard other people say it, so I'm going to say it. We're going to fight, and we're going to go to court. DSSA and NRA have gone to court four times on your behalf, and we've won all four. If either one of these win, if either one of these turn into a law, we will go one more time, once on each one or once together. But we need your help. Lawsuits cost money. I know, I'm a lawyer. Don't, don't stone me, okay? <laughs> Lawsuits cost money. If you haven't contributed yet, we need for you to contribute. I need four volunteers to grab these. We've got some buckets over here. I need four volunteers to grab the bu buckets out of, this, out of these tents and circulate through the crowd so that the crowd can do what they need to do, what they want to do, and that's support freedom and support your rights. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in this to fight. Stand and fight is the NRA slogan. Stand and fight is our slogan. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to do this together. If you're not registered to vote, get registered. If you didn't vote last time, shame on you. Vote next time. Vote freedom first. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy yourselves. Sign the petitions. Contribute. Dig deep. We need money. We need money for these lawsuits because we know they're coming. And if they don't come with these two bills, the way these idiots in here are working, yeah, we're going to do it again. We're going to have to. Sorry. Not all of them are idiots. Some of them actually think. I saw Senator Benini here. He thinks. I saw some others here. They think. But well, we had a majority on the Senate that didn't think. And we've got 11 on the House side that don't think. Let's hope that there are 21 on the House side that do think. Freedom first. Patriot? Are you a patriot? Yes! Yeah. Yeah. Cry freedom. freedom! Freedom! Jeff, I think I've had about enough. You got somebody else to talk? Yeah. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, John. Woo! Everybody inspired to do me? <laughs> Come on. 
We have a limited number of magazines supplied by Magpul to poke in the eyes of these folks in here that voted for that magazine bill. 20 buck donation will get you one. Just take it as a souvenir. You can say where you got it. You order to rally the, a thousand other people, and that's your donation to DSSA to help in our fight. Lawsuits are expensive. When we filed the last lawsuit about the uh, straight wall pistol caliber rifles, $70,000. If we have to go to court on these, quarter million dollars. But we will fight. We will fight to the bitter end, and we will win. All right, I'd now like to introduce Kim Petters. She's part of the D.C. Project and president of the D Women's Coalition. Yep. All right. All right, Kim. Women's Defense Coalition. Kim? Hi, everybody. How are you doing? Woo! So, yeah, I'm your, uh, I'm your D.C. Project delegate. That means uh, for Delaware. So once a year at least, I go to Capitol Hill myself and 50 other women, so it's 50 women, one from each state, and we put another face on gun ownership. We say, hey, we're women, and we care about our gun rights too. And so, you know, I had a lot of things I wanted to say today. And, you know, we do have someone else, Erin, from the Women's Defense Coalition that'll speak, be speaking, and I'm gonna let her talk to you about women's rights because there's something else that's on my mind. So, it's May. With May comes Memorial Weekend. Can I see a show of hands of how many people here are veterans? Raise them up. Thank you. Thank you for your service. So I'm a veteran too. I served 10 years and I deployed. And when I deployed, we're gonna talk about some hard things here, okay? Because that's what we're here to do. When I deployed, my job was to send all of my brothers and sisters home, the ones who didn't make it. I did all the human remain missions for my own brothers and sisters while I was deployed. They gave their lives for this country. They took an oath to protect and defend the Constitution. And they didn't die for our country so that snot-nosed lawyers could become legislators and take our rights away. If you notice, a good majority of those who want to take our rights and chip away at our Second Amendment rights, mommy and daddy sent them to Ivy League schools. They don't know nothing about fighting for their rights. They don't know anything about serving their country. They don't know what it's like to sacrifice, what it's like to leave your children. Do you know one of the people I sent home had an ultrasound on him? He never even got to see his baby. And I'll tell you, you know, and the reason why I bring these things up is because now, I hope I get it right because I want everyone to hear his name. Representative Namdi Chuck Wowacha. He's a representative. He's sponsoring these bills. He is a traitor to me. As far as I'm concerned, he threw out his veteran status. He said something along the lines of, well, well, you know, when I was in war, we didn't need 30 round, you know, civilians shouldn't have 30 round magazines. In case he forgot, in case he forgot, he also took, a, if he's a veteran, he took that same oath. And quite frankly, he is spitting in the faces of every single person who served, fought and died for our country. If he's gonna go ahead and chip it away at the rights, the same rights that we fought for. So let me tell you something. If he deployed, because I don't know his status, then he should have gone to another country like I did, like half of you did, like half of your family members and friends. And in those other countries, we see what it's like when the, when the citizens have their weapons taken away. We're America. In America, we keep our rights. This is ridiculous that we should even be here today. When we lay our heads down at night, we should be able to sleep well knowing that the people in that building are going to protect our rights, not chip away at them. Traitors! Absolutely. 
Absolutely, traitors. There is only one reason the government would want to chip away at your Second Amendment rights. Tyranny. That's absolutely right. Tyranny was as much a threat now as it was in the 1700s and 1800s. We are in a fight now. I thought the only fight I was ever going to have to do was out while I was deployed. Who knew when I came home I would have to fight for those same rights? For our children and grandchildren, because if we didn't do this, can you imagine what it would be like then? Now here's the thing, I'm looking at a sea of people. I don't know how many hundreds of people are here. And I'm glad that you are, but there's something else that you need to be doing. And it is not just emailing and it is not just making phone calls. We need to go to their districts, anyone who voted for these bills, we are going to work our asses off to get them unelected. Yeah. 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 I've been going to their districts. With the women from Women's Defense Coalition, we've been going to their districts. We've been talking to their constituents. None of their constituents knew that this was happening. And none of them want it to happen. You look at someone like Senator Sokola, he only won by 2,000 votes. We could easily flip that and we could easily turn that because here's the thing. As much as I love being around all you wonderful patriots, we should not have to do this. We should not have to fight for our rights. We should be able to sleep well at night and we're not going to be able to until we get these commies out of there. Oh, yeah! touch. We have a plan. There's quite a few of us who have a plan. And we are going to unseat these legislators. They have no idea the wrath that is coming for them. Thank you. Hold it, Kim. Just a couple notes about these bills. The magazine bill says if it has a removable floor plate, it's illegal. Our position is, no matter what the exemptions say, if it has a removable floor plate, it's illegal. It'll ban every magazine in the state of Delaware. That's our position. Permit to purchase. No government official who's only there temporarily as an appointment to an executive branch office should have the right to say you can't own a handgun. Remember that. Sure. That's what they want to do. Come and take them. We can't let them do that. We can't let that happen. That's why we're here today. Our next speaker is Sam Chick from the Young Republicans. I'm going to ask one more time, and I want it loud enough so John Carney, all the way up in Wilmington, can hear it. Are there any patriots out here today? Yes! Good. Because we are going to need each and every one of you. Right now, the Second Amendment is under attack. Our Constitution is under attack. They are the pillars of our society, the pillars of our freedom. When the Second Amendment goes, the First Amendment goes, the Fourth Amendment goes, everything else goes. It's all on the table. And don't think that it can't happen here. It can happen here. So we have to do what we can to preserve our liberty, just as people have had to do all throughout history. The struggle for freedom is not new. For thousands of years, people have fought for every single right they have. Thousands of years ago, everyone here, we would all be slaves underneath tyrants. We have fought, people have fought over years and become more free and more free and more free. And it's gone back and forth. And now we're at another one of these critical junctures where they're trying to take the rights away from the people. We cannot let that happen. People ask, what can we do? There's a lot of things we can do. This is great here, but just like Kim said, there's so much that needs to be done. Let me ask you, are you ready for a revolution? Yes. Been ready. 
Our forefathers, in their wisdom, they gave us the opportunity for peaceful revolution every two years. Guess what? In a year and a half, 18 months, every single seat in that building is up for election. All the representatives, all of the senators, and we need a revolution and get all of them out of there who do not support the Constitution and put people in who stand up for our rights. So what can you do? Vote them out, that's right. Number one, vote. Goes without saying. But it doesn't just happen. Campaigns take work. I've been doing this political thing for a while. I actually ran for representative right here in Dover. I lost by 300 votes. 300 votes. And guess what? Who's in there today? Who, who beat me? John Lynn. Representative Lynn. He's a sponsor on that bill. He does not respect the Constitution, does not respect your rights. It's all about power over other people, not power of the people. Yes, but he has a concealed carry, so he wants his rights and he wants to take away all of yours. So here's what I'm asking. Volunteer for campaigns. Every single person, find the candidates you believe in, find the candidates you believe in. They don't have to be in your district. Find the candidates you believe in in Newcastle County. Go up there and knock on doors for them. Make phone calls for them. Donate to them. Walk in parades for them. This is what we need. I'm gonna tell you right now, I've been in this for a while, the only reason constitutionalists lose in Delaware is because we are not organized. We're all independent-minded people here. We wanna live our lives and we want these people to leave us alone. But guess what? They're not gonna leave you alone unless you make them, unless you put people in that house who are gonna respect your rights. So can I get a commitment from every single person here to go out and volunteer for a campaign and a candidate you believe in. Thank you. That is what's needed. We didn't hear it loud enough. One more time. Yes. All right, thank you so much. Stand up for your rights. Keep fighting. This is just the beginning. Get involved. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Appreciate it very much. One of the things I want to mention is the next election cycle, just like the last one, Delaware State Sportsman Association will be involved. We were involved last time. We helped some candidates out. We're going to help out more candidates. Everybody, like they said, is up for re-election in that building. We are going to make a difference. And we're going to need your help to do so. All right. Our next speaker is a supporter like we've never had before. The true governor! He's one of the patriots in that building, Senator Dave Lawson. Wow! What a great crowd, thank you. Many, many, many familiar faces in the group and many, many, many I haven't seen before. That is awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. What I'd like to do, take a couple minutes, I'd like to count off, start over here with number one. <laughs> All right, let's not do that. Anyway, there's been a lot said prior to my coming up here and there'll be a lot said after I step down. The point is you are here and you make a difference. You absolutely make a difference. If at any time you think you don't, they win. That's not acceptable. You say, well, I, I, my vote doesn't count. If you don't vote, they get two. They get two. Been in there now 11 years. I've never seen such anger or such disrespect for our country. I know it's raining, there's no doubt about that. But think about Valley Forge. They gave it all. Are you willing to do that? Yes. 
I do want you to do this. Turn to the person next to you and said, and said, tell them that you will give your all to protect this country. Do it now. And now is the time to do it. There is no tomorrow. There is no, well, let them do it. Because there is no them. It is you. And it is totally on you. We've got to show unity. We've got to come together like we're doing here and bring more so that these folks understand that you are serious. We've told them before, we're going to remember in November. Unfortunately, we couldn't remember what we had for breakfast. Didn't work out so good. Now they need to know. They need to hear us, they need to see us, and they need to feel us. I don't know about you all, but when my father said no, he meant no. You need to mean no to them. When they say, well, we're going to do this and we're going to do that, you walk up and say, not violently, not mean, but with authority, no. You will not do this. And if you want to throw in a little sidhu boot, that's not a bad thing either. Right. So, it's what we need to do. There's a lot of groups represented out here, and each one is extremely vital, but we need to focus them. There has now been developed a steering group that you can come together, get involved in the round table, and that information that you are doing, what your group is doing, can be put out immediately to every other group involved in the round table. Right now, that can happen. If you need help with a rally, you contact, if you're a member of the round table, you contact the round table and the troops will be assembled. We'll call on different groups, hey, we need 100 from your group, we need 50 here, we need 60. And you commit to that and we can turn this thing upside down with a focus to get people involved. Did anybody bring soap? <laughs> Amen. And by the way, do you think masks ought to be optional? Yes! Do you think a lot of things and most everything in this country should be optional? Yes! That's America. Oh, somebody just said that's freedom. Yeah, that's what it is. I'm a Vietnam combat veteran. I just want to back him up. Every time one of these laws, every time one of these people in here that have never served, by the way, <clears throat> come up with these laws that violate our freedoms, our constitutional rights, they do in fact step on the very veterans that died for this country. Not acceptable. You know, somebody just said tar and feather them. That's happened here before. And we have enough chicken farms in this state, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> but anyway, there's a lot more to be said here. I want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for being here and the support. And more importantly, the friendship that you've shown me. Thank you all. Thank you, Dave. One of the true patriots in the building. It's not raining, it's liquid sunshine. It doesn't rain on patriots. We don't get wet. We fight harder. Anybody that uh, was asked to put this out there, anybody that's hashtag or putting out photographs or video today, I was asked to say that uh, use the hashtag, what's that, the at something? No, that's a hashtag DSSA2A. For those of you who know how to do that, I don't. <laughs> I'm old. All right, our next speaker was a candidate for governor last year. The true governor! Yeah. 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 Wow, look at that! Yeah. All right. For those of you that have seen me speak before, you know I never have notes. I always just speak off the top of my head. 
Well, today it needs to be different. Not only is there a time limitation that we have to stick to that sometimes I have problems with, um, it's critical that I get the words right. You might want to record this. Okay? All right. I almost never ask for help. I'm a take charge person, jumps into the fray, and if people join me, it's great. If they don't, I don't care. I'm going to charge forward. Well, today is different. I am going to ask for help. Every single person here, everybody, everybody, you're, whether you're recording, whether you're standing here, this is my SOS. This is me asking, please help me, because Delaware is falling. Every single person here that is an earshot, understand that. If we don't hold the line here in Delaware, this hijacking of our constitutional rights is going to get worse. We the people must hold the line. There's an attorney in California named Lee Dundas that I must give credit to for the rest for the next thing that I'm getting ready to say. And she told a story about her secretary who had been sex trafficked in Thailand. At the age of 13, the girl was snatched off the street, injected with something, knocked her out, she woke up in a sex slave camp. And the guards, they got bored, they decided to line the girls up, hold a gun to the temple of every girl to see what they would, to see what they would do. As they worked down the line, each girl dropped to her knees, begged for her life, begged them not to pull the trigger. When they got to the girl telling the story, she stood up. She demanded that they hand the gun to her so that she could shoot herself because she didn't want to live like that anymore. The owner of the camp actually overheard it and ultimately set her free. What's the lesson here? Pay attention because this is very important. When you are looking at a real or proverbial locked and loaded, double barrel shotgun of hate and tyranny, you stand up. up. You stand up because you are better off on your feet fighting for your life than ever taking a knee. You kneel before God, but you never, ever bow and take a knee to tyranny. Never. This is stronger than I normally am, and the people are saying, Julianne, tyranny? That seems a bit harsh. Well, do you know what the definition of tyranny is? Hmm, let's see. Unreasonable or arbitrary use of power or control or oppressive government. Sound familiar? Yes. Yeah. To yeah, no doubt. Today's rally is about our right to bear arms under the U.S. and the Delaware Constitutions, but I'm going to tell you, wake up. Wake up and realize many of our constitutional rights are at risk here. Not only are the people in this building and in the Capitol in Washington, D.C., trying to infringe on our right to bear arms, they're attempting to infringe on our right to free speech, our right to assemble, our right to parent our children, Governor Carney has already infringed on our liberties. Yes. Requiring masks, telling us to stay home, telling restaurants how many patrons they can serve, telling businesses on private property that they must enforce the mask mandate, telling parents that their children will have to learn remotely, and now telling parents that their children must get the COVID shot. No, no. 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 Subjected to oppressive government. Well, guess what? There is hope. And I'm going to tell you how the story's going to end. We're going to win. Yeah. And you know how I know that? Because as I'm standing here looking at you and you're standing here looking at me, we are making a pact to not back down. Every time this nation has floated with tyranny in the past, we the people have pulled together pulled back from the brink, lifted up stronger than ever before. We fly our flags high because we are heirs to freedom. 
We are children and grandchildren of people that stormed the beaches of Normandy, of GIs that landed in hot zones in Vietnam, who lived by the creed to never leave a man behind. We are spouses, children, grandchildren of countless Marines, soldiers, sailors, airmen, cops, first responders, all of whom put their lives on the line and sometimes paid the ultimate sacrifice just so that we could be here today. We owe it to them to continue the fight. We owe it to them to not let that sacrifice be in vain. Yeah. Yes. The government cannot and should not be taking over our lives like they're trying to do. They're telling us this is for our own good. We need to just fall in line and conform. Anybody feeling like conforming? No. Thank you. That is not American. We are not sheeple. We are not sheeple. America is about freedom and liberty. But remember this, and if we've talked about our veterans, freedom is never free. Right. It has to be worked for. It hasn't been free. It's never going to be free. We've worked for it, and now we have to work even harder. I know I'm getting close on time, so I'm going to close with this. We the people are the rightful heirs to the kingdom of freedom. And we the people are not going to have it sold out from underneath us. Right. Not on our watch. Thank you for caring about our future. God bless you. Thank you, Joanne. Yeah. yeah I told you it was liquid sunshine. Right? Yeah. It doesn't rain on Patriots. All right, our next speaker is uh, Chris Valrath. He's from the Libertarian Party of the Mises Caucus. Chris? It's great to see you all out here today. I'm Chris Valrath. By trade, I'm a filmmaker and an artist. More importantly, I'm a long-term dedicated advocate and working grunt to the causes of freedom. It's been awesome to team up with the fine patriots of our art cause over the years, often working behind the scenes in the fight for freedom. Individual liberty and personal responsibility are the tenets of the Libertarian Party Mises Caucus of Delaware, who I'm here with today. Seeing so many familiar faces, I'm honored to stand in solidarity with such brave organizations, coalitions, and friends who've made the decision to come out here in force today. I'd like to talk about some universal truths. I'd like to discuss the threatening implications contained within the language of these toxic bills. We're all too aware of the havoc that will undoubtedly thrive within communities of disadvantaged people should these bills pass. But first, I would like to paint a portrait of who will be responsible for inevitable heinous actions of violence from a natural law perspective, from a moral perspective. Certain elected officials refuse to listen to us. They laugh at us, cut us off, lie, disrespect, and scoff at the sacred universal nature of freedom as envisioned by the founders. Yet they roll out the red carpet for highly funded, out-of-state, anti-gun, anti-freedom organizations. Uh -huh. Most of whose members have never lived a week in Delaware, much less had to live in fear in the crime-ridden streets of our cities like Wilmington. A similar detachment and prejudice can be observed in the state representatives who drafted and sponsored these egregious bills. Every day they go to work, which isn't often, they're surrounded by guards with assault rifles and machine guns. They travel to and from their houses, away from the dangerous cities they've turned a blind eye to. Although recently, They've had the luxury of Zoom calls from their plush home offices where we can still see the creases in their newly purchased Delaware flag backdrops produced in Chinese sweatshops. So these bills are presented under the false pretense of preventing violence. But let's talk about violence a little bit. We can start with the legal definition from the Oxford Dictionary. Violence the unlawful exercise of physical force or intimidation by the exhibition of such force. So let's explore some hypothetical scenarios that all of us here are hoping to prevent. When you tell a peaceful individual, minding their own business, 
that you are going to involuntarily seize their property, compensated or not, and if that threat is in direct contradiction to their will, you are committing an overt threat of violence. Furthermore, if you tell that person whom you wish to separate from their lawfully purchased and owned property that if they don't comply, you will escalate with force to make them obey. You will have them kidnapped and thrown into a prison or have them outright killed on the spot should they resist. That is an act of violence. I imagine the contingency of rabid senators would rather sit from the comfort of their homes than lift a finger going door to door to collect newly outlawed gun magazines. Rather, like many cowards, they would have others do the fighting for them. They would demand that officers and agents enforce unequivocally constitutional, unconstitutional legislation, thereby breaking their oaths to the people, breaking their oath to uphold the Delaware Constitution and the U.S. Constitution. Regrettably, bills like these demonstrate how little respect legislators have for law enforcement or the officers' oaths in their desire to serve and protect the communities that they live and work in. Even the Wilmington City Police Chief has been vocal about wishing to better serve his city than in fight actual violent crime, yet his hands are tied by failed politics at play here in Dover. It's become clear that those who have drafted these bills see the police as mere attack dogs, their own personal standing army to carry out their agenda. The Constitution and will of the people be damned. When you're creating an environment that outright blocks disadvantaged communities, the means in which to protect themselves from gangs and thugs, when you tilt the table in the favor of career criminals by ensuring that they will have superior illegal weaponry to use against their victims, that those scumbags are released when caught and freed to assault the neighborhood again, this is an act of welcoming violence into our streets and into our homes. An act of war. By telling a woman who is actively being stalked or living in a rough area where bad things happen, that she will have to wait, that she must attend state-approved class and training, pay unreasonably high costs, that she must first foot the bill for pistol rental and ammunition, and then be profiled like a criminal, and then wait some more, all before she can acquire the means to protect herself, you are creating an environment where criminals with illegal guns who do not obey laws will flourish and be allowed to lord over the frightened population. You are creating a violent world for that woman to live in. They tell us we're safer without guns for domestic violence. That's what they say. I'm not a pawn. But it doesn't have to be this way. We need to learn from the mistakes of other cities and states gripped by violent crime. Fallen cities plagued by unconstitutional, immoral, prejudiced, racist, sexist, anti-gun legislation and enforcement? The clear answer is no. No to Senate Bill 3 and no to Senate Bill 6. Right. Not in Delaware as it is prohibited by our oh, Constitution. Yeah. 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 Where it is prohibited by our will as free Americans. The Libertarian Party is growing and expanding at a fast rate and our Mises Caucus we're all about taking direct positive action. So you can count on us to be steadfast in the resolve against tyranny, in the fight against tyranny. So let's have a talk after the show. Thank you all for coming out. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. For those of you that listen to the Senate debate on the two bills, Senator Hawker probably made the best statement that sums up the two bills. Senator Hawker was trying to question Senator Lockman, one of the sponsors of the bill, and you could hear Senator Lockman's dog barking in the background. I think her newly creased flag from the state of Delaware was hanging in the back also. The dog kept barking. Senator Hawker kept trying to ask a question. The dog kept barking. The Senator Lockman apologized. Bethany Hall Long, as presiding over the Senate, that all we know it's you know because of zoom and everybody has to adjust senator hawker said this he says i've been running dogs for 30 years i know what that dog's saying these are bad bills there you go
I think that sums it all up. Right there, it's recorded. You can go back and listen. That's another Patriot, Senator Hawker. Yeah. And we have another Patriot from that building, staunch supporter, Senator Brian Pettyjohn. This is your fight. Yeah. yeah. Whose fight is it? Our fight. What are you going to do? Fight. How hard are you going to fight? Hard. Are you going to give up? No. That's what I want to hear. Now, I'm looking out here over this crowd, and I tell you, I was here on the first day when everybody showed up a couple years ago to fight Senate Bill 65, the, the scary gun bill. That's where, that's where Mitch and his team got their start, Delaware Gun Rights, was that bill. Now, I'm looking right now at this crowd. It's at least double the size. Yeah, okay, we're bringing yeah. more and more people to yeah. this fight. We're building stronger. We're talking to more people. We're getting out there, and more people are shaking their heads, nodding their heads, and saying, you know what? You're right. We've got to protect the rights that we have here in the state of Delaware. How many of you have one of these cards? Delaware State Sportsman Association card. Those of you who don't, you need to get one. It's got a friendly reminder on the back of it. Article 1, Section 20 of the Delaware Constitution Bill of Rights. I don't even have to look at this. Now, a person has the right to keep and bear arms for the defense of self, family, home and state, and for hunting and recreational use. Those are rights that are in our state constitution, and they're in there for a really, really good reason. You know, political winds change. You get a general assembly in there that wants to infringe on rights, it's pretty easy for them to pass a bill, but it's not easy for them to change our constitution. If you get a bill that's passed that's unconstitutional, and it tries to go up, get up against this, our courts have a duty to strike it down. Now, I hope and pray that if it gets over there to that building, to our Supreme Court, if these bills pass, that they do the right thing over there. But this right here, this is our guarantee that the government won't infringe on those rights. And we need to remind all 62 people that are in that building that this this right here is more important than their polls, more important than their feelings, more important than the Moms Demand Action crowd. These are the words that everybody in that building swore an oath to uphold and protect. And it's time to remind them about that. Yeah. If these bills pass and they have to go over there to that building, it's going to cost some money. Joining the DSSA will help with those costs. Those buckets are going around right now. That's going to help with those costs. But I'm going to go one step further. I was talking to my good friend over here and another staunch supporter of our Second Amendment, Senator Benini. We've agreed that we're going to match the first $500 that's collected here today out of our own pockets. It's that important. It's that important that we build up that war chest to fight these things. We're not doing it for us. We're not doing it for us. We're doing it for every one of you. We're doing it for your kids, for your grandkids, for future generations, because if we let these rights slip by, there's not going to be a tomorrow. So everybody, thank you for being out here. Thank you for letting your voice be heard. And thank you for standing proud and standing tall for our rights, for our states, and for our Constitution. God bless you. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Senator Pettyson. You all heard him. Dig deep. We need to help. Next speaker is Nick Miles from the Young Republicans also. Thank you. Nick? Just a little guy. Thank you. You don't need to stand on that. <laughs> yeah, I know. 
Um, so most of you here may know me, some of you may not. My name is Dick Miles, I'm the Vice Chair of the Delaware Young Republicans. I also work for the Walkaway Campaign. In 2020, I traveled this entire country to fight for our freedoms. I was in every major city across America for our Rescue America rallies. <laughs> I've been attacked by BLM, I've been attacked by Antifa, you name it, it's happened. <laughs> But I'm here to speak for the younger generation. A generation in which the Second Amendment is largely forgotten. Households have become stratified by gun ownership, and newer generations have either accepted or completely de reject rejected the concept of firearms. This hiatus eats away at the ability of many people to advocate for the continuance of the right. The number one argument in my generation is that the Second Amendment was written in a time of muskets. You don't think our founding fathers knew about the possible evolution America would endure? If that's your argument, then I guess the founding fathers never intended for freedom of speech to include iPhones in the current media. It's no longer about saving lives from gun violence, it's about control. Anti-gun politicians use gun control in an effort to combat crime. If we ban a firearm, Gun control is not crime control. <clears throat> Sorry, my, my news is running. <laughs> if a criminal wants to get a firearm and commit a crime, they will break the law in obtaining one. If gun control was crime control, then why does our very own Attorney General drop gun charges? It's time we stop trying to limit firearm ownership from law-abiding citizens. It's time we educate and train we the people on firearm ownership. With that, I leave you with this poem. <clears throat> it's from the soul of an American. Every year they put it to the test, but the Second Amendment stands the best. The right to own arms in a country that's free is a loyal display of our integrity. For hunting or self-protection guns can be great, and in the last chance, militia, they can help with our fate. I've carried a weapon when I served my country, and I swore an oath to keep America free. But freedoms and liberties are getting thinner each day as the Constitution's words are slowly melting away. This country was protected with powder and shot in the hearts of the militia who won't be forgot. Not only did the squirrel, squ squirrel guns put food on their plate, they gave us this nation we all see as great. That was written by a guy named Kyle. Um, you, you can check out his book on Amazon, but I posted it on Facebook the other day. But yeah, with that, I hope I see you guys at a lot of other rallies. Yeah. <laughs> we shouldn't have to advertise as hard as we did this past week to get you guys to show up. So show up, I'll be at every single one. I usually am, but thanks. Thank you. Thank you, man. All right, we have another patriot from that building back there to support us all every time we need it. Senator Dave Wilson. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. It's just so great to see this crowd here today. Uh, in my uh, daytime profession, I would call this an overwhelming crowd. So we're happy that you're here. And I just want to say that, uh, you know, being in this building behind us is really a challenge. You know the reason it's a challenge? Because we need you back in November. We need you to be on the front line in November so that you will elect people that we don't have to put up with this nonsense that we have in yeah. Senate Bill 3 and Senate Bill 6 and uh, on April the 1st. April Fool's Day, perfect timing. That's why they played that game. But I'm just here to say today that we support this 100% uh, uh, of what you guys are doing. You've got to stay strong. I look at Sussex County, we're probably 99% is voting the way you want. But when you get north of here, you've got to look at the circumstances. So you don't need to campaign in your backyard. You need to campaign in Newcastle County. Yeah. That is the people that we deal with on the daily basis. When you see that the vote was 8 to 13 and 21 of us in this building behind you, you know why it was that way? Because of Newcastle County. Yeah. So 
But I'm here to tell you that if you want to keep this organization together, you want to see freedom, you want to see us move forward, you've got to change the dynamics up north. So with that, I'm here today to tell you that I'm so, I'm so eliminating those people that don't vote the way you people think. God bless you all, and thank you for being here. Thank you, Dave. Uh, for those of you who don't know, if you had something to sell, you would have bought it. <laughs> now, we have uh, Glenn Watson from Patriots of Delaware. Yeah! 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 Thank you, Jeff. Uh, thank you to all of you folks for coming out here today. Uh, we are a relatively new group here. Uh, started in early January, for you folks who don't know. Uh, we're doing a lot of things. Uh, we do support the Second Amendment, along with all of our other rights here. Uh, we are working uh, with our local school boards and things to change things on a local level here. We have candidates running that we are supporting. We are looking to move into our local town elections and then on up into our state elections here to take our state back. And this is what we have to do. We have to start local because if we're going to rebuild, you've got to rebuild from the bottom up, not from the top down. And that's what we're doing here. We're looking, we need all kinds of, I know everybody's asking for volunteers, everybody's asking for money, we're doing the same thing. We need folks, when it, when it comes time to vote next time, we have to have poll watchers. You know, we were, we were caught last time here with our pants down, you can say, okay, last election. We're not going to let it happen this time. We need poll watchers, people to keep an eye on things there. We need folks to get involved with the government. Dave Lawson, he, he tells a story about uh, his senator uh, wasn't, they weren't seeing eye to eye, and his friend kept telling him, well, do something about it. Dave kept saying, well, what do I do? And his friend told him to run, and Dave did, and here he is, you know, senator, and, and he backs us. He's a great guy. A couple weeks ago, we had a rally up here for opening the schools, which is very important. I mean, I don't understand how our kids cannot be bused to school at more than a 25% capacity. I can get on an airplane and fly to Florida, and I sit shoulder to shoulder with people on there for two and a half hours. So why can't our kids go to school? So uh, there you go. So two weeks ago, we came up with this idea. Dave's been doing his Zoom meetings right from the Senate chamber the whole time everybody's been home conducting theirs. We brought a table up, desk chair. We set him up outside here. We had an open school rally. He did his Zoom meeting there. And as he was doing this, we stood behind him with signs. Everybody was quiet, didn't interrupt his meeting. When his time came to speak, one of the other senators asked him what was going on behind him. And he said, well, the best thing for you folks to do to find that out is come outside and see what's going on. Of course, nobody but nobody ventured out to us, okay? Yeah. So that building there, that is for we the people. You know, they, they work for us, but they actually think that the, we the people are working for them. And that's not right. So we're going to make a change with that. You folks get a chance. Go to PatriotsForDelaware.com. Sign up for our weekly email list. We have a meeting this Monday uh, down to Milton at Hudson Field on Route 1. It uh, starts at 6 o'clock, 6 to 7, is a social meet and greet with uh, Ashley Murray. She's running for the Cape School Board District Vote down Tuesday. there, trying to get her in there to make some changes. And 7 o'clock starts our meeting. So come see us. We have speakers. We have a lot going on. We have rallies and things. We're set up over here with a couple tents. Come see us. We'd love to talk to you. Thank you for your time. Yeah. God bless you, Patriots. Vote Tuesday. Thank you, Glenn. Whoever saw um, President, what's his name, State of the kind of a union address last week? You remember when he said, we the people, we the government? Whoa! No, we the people is us, not the government. And now you know exactly where he stands. Years ago, we tried to give him back to Scranton, Pennsylvania, but they wouldn't even take him. Now we have the uh, House Minority Leader, hopefully can make him House Majority Leader, Danny Short. Yeah! Woo! Yeah! Well, I'm here to ask for your help. Behind me are several other 15 patriots that I know of in our caucus. They're going to try to stand strong over the next several weeks. And we're always looking at a real sign of confidence and support. And for too long, we felt that we've been alone. 
And those of you who are veterans like myself, you know it's really hard to charge that hill. And hopefully you could look back and see people behind you. I'm encouraged. There's two things that's happened this week that give me hope, and give me the enthusiasm and the willingness to stand up stronger to support this state and the rights that we're talking about today. If you get a chance, check Facebook out and look at Eric Buxton's, Buxton's post this morning. An unusual thing happened right here in this community. It doesn't relate to this at all. But it gives strong hopes to me and hopefully to you. CR and Smyrna boys were playing a baseball game. They were in the third inning of that baseball game and across the street, the Little League system started up. And guess what happened? They played the national anthem. But then an unusual thing started, and that's the story that Eric was talking about. The Smyrna and the CR boys stopped, took their hats off, put their hands over their hearts and waited to that national anthem across the street stop playing. That is a story that just reaches out to your heart that you just cannot let go. And that's why I tell it to you today. The second event for me as the house leader on our side is what's happening right here, right now. Yeah. yeah. You exercising your First Amendment rights to protect your Second Amendment rights. Yeah. And I appreciate it, and my colleagues do. We're here to say thank you to you for having our backs and supporting us next week and the week that follows yeah. as we fight and pledge to you, I will, and I'm sure my colleagues will, do two things. If it gets to us, it's no and no on Senate Bill 3 and no on Senate Bill 6. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Danny. All right, now we have um, Alex Ballard, the Armed Black Movement. Alex, come on up. Thank you. Good afternoon. So I come to you here with one purpose, um, and that's for truth. Everything that I do is rooted in two things, truth and justice, and I approach everything for that purpose. I was taught that you can resolve all conflict and everything with simple and honest questions and simple and honest answers. And so in search of the truth, my question is why are we here? Why are we proposing these bills, okay? We have one of two things going on. We either have a largely ignorant group of people that we've employed to represent us. <laughs> and if that's the case, that's fine. When we ask these simple questions, we'll get simple answers and we'll resolve all of this and we can get back to living. The other thing is either they have an intent to severely oppress us. Yeah. Yeah. And on this day, I'm going to declare they have to, they have to stand on one of those positions because if it's ignorance, we're going to educate them. Yeah. And if they're not interested in educating, uh, being educated, then we know that they're tyrants. Yes. Yes. So today we're going to give them an out. We're going to give them an out. And I know that a lot of people have been pushing for these bills because they believe that it's going to reduce violence. Okay? And when I hear stuff like that, I'm insulted because I grew up in New Jersey, specifically the North New Jersey area, and we've never been able to purchase firearms, we've never been able to get permits, and it's still one of the most violent cities in this country. The other thing is I'm insulted when people say that they're acting on behalf of a population that they're not a part of. And I feel like that my community, the black community, has been preyed on for ignorance and fear. Okay? Yes. I've been talking to people, and most people who have been in support of SB Thrill 3 is because they, they want to have background checks enforced when people purchase firearms. The problem with that is it already exists. Yeah. Yes. So this bill is doing nothing but delaying a right. Yes. 
And when you're talking about defending yourself, time is critical. So how do you execute your right when you have to wait and to receive the ability to utilize it? Okay, so we're gonna give these people an out. If you're ignorant on why you're supporting these bills, then seek knowledge. And if you're not seeking knowledge, then you've identified yourself as a tyrant. Yeah. It's pretty simple. The problem is people try to make laws. You cannot make law. There's only one law, that's God's law. Yeah. Yeah. You can write policy that helps to reinforce God's law, but you can't write law. The only people that you write policy and laws for are people like us, law-abiding citizens. So every law that they're right is only affecting us. It's not affecting criminals. So if you work for us and you're writing laws for us, we're saying we don't want these laws. Shut them down. Yeah! Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Are y'all getting a message? Yeah. Yeah. No. You know what to do next. Dig deep, donate to DSSA. We have, hopefully we don't have lawsuits to face, but we also have next year's election cycle, and we will make a difference. Yes. Next speaker is another supporter in that building, Representative Rich Collins. To really see, wow, I'll tell you what, you can't see this crowd from back here. Fantastic. Well, I'll tell you what, folks, it's a shame we ought to have a drone or something to see what's back there. Let me tell you, uh, I'm going to try and give you a little inside baseball. Number one, I have gotten more emails against these two bills, SB3 and SB6, than any other issue by far in all the time I've been in Yeah! All right! Yeah. I would ask you if, if you do email and you haven't sent a message to legislators yet, please do it. Another two. You know how many messages I've gotten for these bills? I'd say no more than two or three. Wow. It's incredible. I don't know where these people think the support is because I'm not seeing it. I want to throw out a couple other ideas that I haven't heard. Number one. We all know that after the last election, many of us feel that our president was robbed of an election. Yes. Yeah. Many of us feel that the election system is not as honest as it could be. Yeah. Yeah. But folks, you need to remember, when people hear that, some people will decide not to vote. And five or 10% not voting on our side means we lose two or three seats. That's a matter of fact, that is exactly why the U.S. Senate is now in the hands of Democrats. Because after Trump lost in Georgia, when they had those special elections, the Republicans did not show up. That's right. So I'm begging you, let's be positive. We're going to do everything we can to make the election system in Delaware honest. But let's make sure every one of our people gets out to vote. Yeah! 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 yeah. yeah. I'll also tell you that another huge issue that is hammering our freedoms right now is these emergency orders. Yeah. Yeah. Folks, the reason they have so much confidence they can pass idiotic bills like three and six is because, frankly, we have not made that much noise about being told how we can live when the government will open. I've been to a number of rallies for our freedom in regard to the virus, and the most I've seen is one or two hundred people. If we had had this every time, we might not have seen some of these gun bills in the same way. So I don't know what to tell you. We've got to understand, freedom is connected. We have passed several horrible, horrible bills, and others that are coming and frankly, folks, other than the gun bill, we're not hearing that much about them. So both you and your organization, we all need to get informed and we need to work in an organized fashion to stop bad government, which is exactly what Delaware has right now. Yeah. Yeah. But I will tell you this, I commit to you that I will never vote to infringe your gun rights 
And I feel confident my Republican colleagues are all going to join us. So thank you all. Thank you for your support. Thank you, Rich. I really appreciate it. As I said earlier at the beginning, DSSA works in conjunction with the NRA in protecting your rights here in the state of Delaware. The Delaware State Sportsman Association is probably the fifth largest, sixth largest state association in the country. We're up in the same ranks as New York, New Jersey, California. Wow. We have over 3,000 members, but I need 3,000 more. Yeah. Because that's the only way that we can make our voices, voices heard in that building back there is by, what, 250 people? That's all we got because that's compliant, right? Right. Now, we've got over a thousand people here. I don't care what the 250 means. All right. The NRA, we work with them all the time. I'm proud to introduce John Weber, NRA Isla. John? Yeah! Thanks, Jeff. How's everybody doing? Glad the sun's finally come out to join us. You're all out here making your voices heard, all right? Yeah! You know who else has been hearing you? These folks, don't be fooled. Just because some of these bills have moved, it is being moved by a loud, vocal minority of people in that building. Right. Your voices together will speak louder than they ever can. Good. You need to let them know that a handful of people in that building will not hold you accountable for the actions of some people up in the north of this state who do some bad things. Yep. These bills only punish you for following the law. Yeah. We know what's going to happen here. You think any criminal's gonna go turn in their magazine for $10? Do right, right. you think you're actually gonna get $10 when you turn in your magazine? <laughs> exactly, we know exactly what these bills are gonna do. They're only gonna make it harder for you to defend yourself and take care of your family, and they're gonna try to tax you at every turn along the way. And again, who else is paying these taxes? The criminals? No. no. They're not gonna have permits, they don't have them now. Why would they start getting them in the future? You guys and what you're doing here today is making a huge difference. Don't let all the noise, what you see in the media and everything else, deter you at all. When you stand together, when you join groups like DSSA, NRA, DGR, these people do hear you. They have been overwhelmed with how many have spoken at, at these hearings. I'll tell you, in the Senate there were so many people they couldn't get them all in and they were shutting us down with less than a minute. People in the middle of sentences, they had no time to hear what you had to say because they know this isn't popular. They know what they're doing is not right, and that's why they're trying to ram it through on the Internet, from their homes, sitting on their couches, hoping nobody else notices what's going on. So thank you again for being here. Yeah. Appreciate everything you're doing. Keep it up. We can defeat these things. Join DSSA. Be here. Participate in these hearings. Contact your representatives, your senators. Speak to everyone in your neighborhood. Speak to people at the grocery store. Everyone. A lot of people don't know what's going on here because that's how they want it. So get out there. Make folks aware. Get engaged. And keep what you're doing. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Who's got to stand up and fight an NRA sign? Let's see him. Come on. All right. That's what we have to do. Stand up and fight. Another patriot in that building that's been with us the whole time, Senator Richardson. Yeah! I'm going to give you a little history lesson first. Um, when the U.S. Constitution was written, there was a group called the Anti-Federalist. One of the members of the Anti-Federalist was Patrick Henry. And he was not really in favor of the Constitution, the seven articles of the, of the Constitution being approved without the Bill of Rights. You know Patrick Henry, I think he's the one that said something about give me liberty or give yeah. me death. Yeah. Yeah. He was a Virginia um, delegate and uh, he gave a pretty startling speech uh, on the floor of the Virginia Assembly. Um, Dave Lawson, Senator Dave Lawson spoke here earlier, and um, his, I, spoke, I took the concealed carry course from him. Um, his office is before my office. If you go into the second floor, 
up there and you you have to pass his office before you get to my office he's been a strong supporter of mine I'm a strong supporter of his and I just feel so confident that no one's no one that's um, an antagonist is going to get past his office to come to my office because Dave's there so I appreciate him uh, very much for that reason and for a lot of other reasons where do our rights come from God where do our rights come from? God! God. Not government? No. no! I think the Democrats think that their rights, they have the right to dictate to us and exclude God from, from the equation. Yeah. Yeah. They do not have that right. Our rights come from God, not from government. I want to thank you all for being here. I'm glad to be a part of this. I have in my pocket something. I think it's a NRA membership card. I'm a proud member of the NRA, and I am very proud to be here and defend your constitutional rights. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, Brian. Our next speaker should have been elected to the U.S. House. Yeah. Lee Murphy. I just have one thing to say. Free men do not ask permission to bear arms. And let me amend that for 2021. Free men and women do not ask permission to bear arms. That's right. I want to thank you, Jeff and DSSA, for having this wonderful event today. Uh, I look out here in the crowd, I see a lot of familiar faces. I'd like to start with a quote, a very powerful quote. The beauty of the Second Amendment is that it will not be needed until they try to take it. Yes. The Second Amendment will not be needed until they try to take it. Thomas Jefferson said that. You know, we look, uh, first of all, I want to say, uh, I'm looking out in the crowd for our Tom Carper, Lisa <laughs> Button, Rochester, Chris Coons. I, I want to call them up here if, if they happen to be here today. Apparently, they do not care about your rights. They have made it clear they don't care about your rights. You know, the bills, the bills before the House behind us, the bills in the Capitol in Washington, D.C., sure, they want to they restrict your magazines. They want to make it costly and time-consuming to get a permit, to get a gun. But let me tell you, it's more than that. This is about control. This is about controlling your lives. Your guns, your ammunition, sure. But we've witnessed in the last year total control, total tyranny by a government that's housed right behind me. COVID in this state was a disaster. It continues. It continues. Our kids need to be back in school. Yes. Yes. Our restaurants need to be open. Yes. Our businesses, our businesses and manufacturing need to be open. Yes. You, know, you know, we, we, and I say we, I mean every single person here. We, the people, we, are we are the people we are the people and this time and place today in dover here today each and every one of us we are meant to be here this is where we're meant to be 
It is up to us to change things if we want change. On this day, on this day 76 years ago, the United States celebrated VE Day, victory in Europe against a fascist regime, and it was a day to celebrate. That generation was called the greatest generation. Gratefully so. Gratefully so. But let me tell you, let me tell you, this is our time in history. This is our time. This is our time to stand up, just like they did in 1940 and 41 and 42, 44, 45. This is our time, ladies and gentlemen. You never know when it's gonna come, but this is our time. This is our time to stand up for what we believe in, to stand up for the Constitution, to stand up for the Second Amendment. And it will take each and every one of us here today. This is no small task. I'm proud, like you. I'm proud to be an American. I'm damn proud to be an American. Yeah. And I want my grandchildren, I want my grandchildren to have the same United States of America that I had. Yeah. yeah. And I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna fight like hell for that. Like each and every one of you. Yes, sir, General. Their time, those people, those people in that house behind me, those people in Washington and the Capitol that think these laws are good, their time is over. Yeah. Their time is over. over. This is our time. This is our time. God bless America. Thank you. And let's fight. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lee. I wouldn't count him out. Look around. All right. If somebody here that's a survivor would like to address the crowd, Jennifer Rambo. Holy crap, there is a lot of people here. <laughs> All I have to say, I, I've been to a couple rallies. I'm a victim of a violent crime. I'm not going to go into details because I don't want anybody to go home with horrific thoughts in their head. But I would like a sign here of how many fathers we have in the audience. How many fathers of women? How many have girls? How many of you want your daughter to not have the ability to protect themselves or their children. None. No hands, why is that? We taught them. Right, you don't want your daughter to be a victim, right? right. Hell no! Right? But it's kind of funny because before they started to mess around with this bill, we had a Zoom meeting with Miss Minor Brown. And she started the whole conversation out basically saying she was in support of the bill. Irregardless of the hurt she heard after that, she didn't care. So we had a rally in Wilmington, coincidentally at the first courthouse in this state, right, Sam? Yep. Right, we, we were talking about Old Newcastle. Yeah, shithole. So, well, I'm all for people who don't believe in guns. That's fine. But you have no right to legislate my right not to defend myself. And it's ironic because I'm standing here in Delaware, first to adopt will be last to desert the Constitution. Yeah. Right? What's the Second Amendment? 
right? It's not the 30th Amendment or the 80th Amendment because it had no, no validity or no seriousness to it. It's the Second Amendment because it's critical to keeping our freedom. Now, after the Wilmington rally, Ms. Brown got an influx of emails, phone calls, text messages. I believe people rode by her house. Well, words on paper scare her because she went to apply for her concealed carry permit. Okay, so can anybody tell me the definition of hypocrite? Right, so she is co-sponsoring the bill to limit the magazine of a gun that she's getting ready to purchase. So I'm asking our elected officials, when you pass a law, are you allowed to exempt yourself from the law that you pass on your constituents? No. No? No? Okay. So, we need to have our voices heard. Email every day. Every day. All it takes, copy and paste. Forward. Forward. CC every other legislator. You just do it once and you just hit forward. Same, same people. <laughs> now this woman put a burr in my panties because I'm a victim. I will never be a victim again. And any other woman that fears, I work in Dover. I don't work in the nicest of areas. Well, Sean Lynn's area. So, as they decide to pass these laws and inflict our rights, we need to stand, we need to donate, we need to vote, we need to on a regular basis let these people know that they're not going to take our rights. The hypocrites in that building behind us need to know as from now until the election comes in that they're not going to do it. Every father out there, every mother out there, we need to care about the kids that are coming. I don't even have kids, but I'm concerned for everybody else's kids. We need to give a shit. We need to take a stand. We need to put God back in school. We need to discipline our children. They need to be raised to respect the law of the land, life, liberty, Right? They need to respect differences of opinion. Stop being a keyboard warrior. Stop being a couch bitcher. Let's get off our ass and take our country back. Thank you, Jennifer. Well put. For those of you, those of you were, that were uh, listening at the hearing on the in the Senate side. Something that Jennifer said remind me of what Senator Kyle Evans Gay said. We had somebody that was describing the unfortunate incident that happened to a lady in New Jersey who was waiting for her permit to purchase a gun from the local sheriff or whatever it is because she had a protection from abuse order against her boyfriend. The time limit went by. The time limit went by. She couldn't get her permit. Her boyfriend stabbed her to death in her driveway. Kyle Evans Gay's response to that was, well, that's just one woman. I don't think so. I don't think so. That somebody needs to be unelected next year. She also made the statement that any woman involved in the Second Amendment and the right to keep and bear arms under the Delaware Federal Constitution is a pawn. You're just being used. How many of the women out here feel like you're being used? There's not a hand there. How many of you are part of this fight and going to help us get through and get these people unelected? Yeah! There you go. All right. We have another strong supporter from this building back here, Representative Steve Schmick. Thank you, my brother. And it is so good that you are all here and taking time out of your day to show up where it's necessary to be seen because you're not being heard. Yeah. You are not heard. 
I see the emails. We see handwritten letters that come into all our offices. I'm going to ask that all these people that are contacting us, they don't think like you do. Where are you? Where are you? Gordon Bowers, come on up here. John, come on up here. Anybody else? What happened? All right. Yeah, come on up. John, just stay right down there. Yeah, you, you ought to see the pins in his leg. They're pretty bad. I will let you know that the concern that I have is that they're trying, thank you very much, they're, they're trying to divide us. There's a whole reason why everybody's supposed to stay home and they're, they're clicking on their computers. Those algorithms on your computers are causing a divide on these brothers that I bring before you now. Don't let that happen. We are Americans. I don't see how ugly this man is. I don't see it. I don't see this man who works very hard as a fireman. I don't see him in any other way. I don't see anything here that says that he's not my brother. I'm telling you, we are Americans. Don't let them divide us. Now, we have paid attention to your Second Amendment. And it calls people to pay attention. And it takes their head out of the sand. You got to get you off the couch. We got to get you off the couch and get you in here. We have an effort in Delaware legislature to make everything a health crisis because there's, we are a result of a huge experiment. The experiment is executive authority. We've been under an executive authority since last, what was it, April? March. Yes. This is horrific. Representative Collins came up with a bill, we've all supported it, and all the only names on there are Republican names. And that is to limit the uh, executive authority for only 30 days, and then you need a legislative approval after that. Why is this significant? Yes. It's significant because they want to put health, a health crisis under the name of guns and race. Why? Why would they want that? So there's no legislative authority, and you, it takes away the voice of the people, and it leaves it under one executive branch. Don't let that happen. You haven't seen them yet. You've seen the guns, but you haven't seen House Concurrent Resolution Number 21 that talks about race as a health crisis. Don't let it happen. Don't let it happen. The, um, what this is is intimidation. We are looking at the education of our children to divide us as well. Teachers are afraid. How many teachers do we have? That's what I thought. There's a whole lot of There's nobody here. Nobody put up their, their hands. We are all teachers. We're teachers of our neighbors. We're teachers of our children. We're teachers in every aspect of our relationships with others. Don't give up your relationship to others. Make sure that people are not intimidated to speak their minds. Please continue to support one nation under God as Americans. Thank you and support the DSSA and the NRA. Thanks, Dave. We have some other representatives and senators, I believe, that are here. If they could just let me know, I'll recognize them. If they would like to say something, they're more than welcome to. We have some representatives, I, like the representative Postals is here, I know. Okay. Any other? Rest, representative Shannon Morris was here. Jeff Spiegelman's here, Representative Spiegelman. These are all patriots in this building. You need right. to support them when they're up for re-election. Yeah. I know. All right, that's really all we have today. I just wanted to see if we could get a gathering of like-minded patriots in one place. The impetus for this rally was the result of the House hearing a couple weeks ago. I got so ticked off, I said, we're going to do something. This is it. Yeah. I really appreciate you coming here. I hope you enjoyed yourself. You met like-minded people. 
You're, good. you're involved, you're engaged today, but don't stop. You have to remain engaged. We have to vote these people out. And to all the mothers out there, happy Mother's Day tomorrow. Thank you again for showing up. Thank you for your support. Drive safe, and we'll be back with you soon.